On this toy spot, we're looking at the DC Universe Classics Wave 11. This is the Fans Choice Figure 5. This is the question. And if your question was, when was this figure ever going to be released, the answer is Wave 11. Wave 11 right here. Uh, question was a voted in uh, fan choice. I'm trying to remember the other figures that were uh, were part of the... Uh, I wish I had my toy fair handy. But anybody can remember the other figures that were in the fan's choice. Uh, please comment down below because I, I, I'm trying to remember what the, uh, the other fan choice figures were. Needless to say, the question beat them all out and he was the uh, figure that was released in this wave a figure that I certainly was looking forward to getting down below you can see uh, <laughs> you can I, I'm thinking it's question I'm trying to even make out what this is I think it's his eye his eyebrows um, but as you can see starburst in the background here I won't say too much about it because I, I always say the same thing in all my reviews Talking about the the back back uh, card here. Question comes with the left leg of Kilowog, and on the back, the other figures in this wave: Catman, Tui, Shark, Dead Man. We've got John Stewart, Steppenwolf, and Cyborg Superman. The biography kind of looks like Cobra Commander there too. Uh, the biography on question says: Vic Sage was the smartest investigative reporter in Hub City but he could only get so far playing by the rules. So Vic invented an alter ego to prowl Hub's back alleys, a faceless enigma known as cr to criminals as The Question. His war on crime brought him into conflict with Lady Shiva, the world's deadliest martial artist. Killed in that battle, he was revived and trained by Kung Fu master Richard Dragon. Since his brush with death, The Question returned to action driven by a new philosophy and a burning need to expose corruption and justice to the cold light of day. Ooh, I got... Anyone else get, anyone else get chills with that? Uh, statistics, first appearance, Blue Beetle number 1, June 1967. Real name, Charles Victor Zaz, a.k.a. Or Saz, a.k.a. Vic Sage. Occupation, costume vigilante, investigative journalist. Base of Operations, Hub City, Special Abilities, Highly Skilled Hand-to-Hand -hand Combatant, Expert Criminologist, and Detective. There you go. I never also point out the fact that there's a little blurb, a little uh, advertisement, a little uh, Maddie Collector logo down there. Maddie Collector actually is a decent place to go to. If you guys ever want to check out some cool stuff, go to MaddieCollector.com. No plug, really. I'm just saying check it out. It's can kind of see some of the stuff that's just coming out and pick stuff up early. Uh, but there you have a package. There you have the package on question. And if your next question was, when are we going to look at, your, at the figure? The answer is right. And if your last question, if you had several questions and your last question was, hey, what, what part did he come with? Well, he came with the leg. So checklist time. Let's get the leg of Kilowog here, and we'll get the very large stump of Kilowog, and we'll... Now, I also want to point out before I put this into place, um, it's very interesting. This is one of the only few Collect and Connect pick pieces that I can think of that actually don't have... Oh, there's C question's going to take a nap. We'll just put them there. Um, that doesn't actually have that split leg. Um, what they've actually ended up doing is they've get, gotten rid of that split-legged uh, joint here and they've just opted for the outright plug. So, very interesting. This is one of the few uh, pieces that I remember seeing looking like this. But we'll put it into place. I think that's in. Looks in. And uh, what we have is two parts shy of a completed kilowog, a very large kilowog that's getting cut off by my camera here. Um, so there you go. Looking pretty good, eh, so far, guys? All right, let's wake up, uh, hey, let's wake up question here. And question, 
was one of the figures I really wanted to get from this set. I think more, almost more than anyone else. I mean, the Cyborg Superman was one I really wanted to get. The John Stewart, but I really like the look of the question. The question, the question. If you ask me, the question is awesome. The question is quite nice. And uh, I'm gonna, I'll start the review right off by saying that uh, I really didn't follow a question very much in the comics. Um, in fact, it wasn't really until they brought him into Justice League Unlimited that I really got a taste of question. Oh, that sounds wrong. Um, but having since seen him in uh, Justice League Unlimited, just bang the camera, um, I've really grown to uh, enjoy the figure. I mean, enjoy the character. And when he was coming out in the DC, uh, well, the Justice League Unlimited toy line, I had to pick him up. And I was I was looking forward to getting him in the DC universe as well, and he certainly has not disappointed. Uh, while he does have a bit of paint, or plastic flaking on the side there, um, he is a nice looking figure. He is very nice looking. I like the fact. I mean, it's not right in. He's not got a completely smooth face. As you can see, he's got the indentations of the mouth, the nose, the eyes. I think that's a nice little touch. And I remember when I saw a question the first time, I he reminded me he reminded me of the blank from the Dick Tracy comics and movie. Certainly inspired by. And I think question here came first. I'm trying to remember. Um, one thing I like too is the fact that his tie his tie can actually come out of his vest as I struggle to get it out here. I'm trying to remember who uh, who actually first mentioned that. I think there's a YouTuber on YouTube uh, does really nice DC Universe figure reviews. Uh, Gar G I think it's G-A-R-O-C-H. That He commented as well that you can take the tie out which is kind of neat. I won't play around with it because you know what's going to happen if I keep fiddling around with it. It's going to come. It's going to break right off. Um, but nice detailing. You can see all the detailing in his trench coat here. He's got a couple of splotches of paint I see on the top there. But I mean that's that's a small thing. You can even see that they've painted in buttons on his sleeves, which is a nice touch as well. Um, it one problem. It's so small almost unmet I won't even mention it all right I'll mention it the one thing that would have been nice was if the jacket was a separate piece from the suit jacket like if the trench coat was a separate piece so you could actually kind of spread it out as you can see the trench coat is one piece to the suit jacket so I mean it's it's not going anywhere it would have been nice if it was just a separate piece so that not that you would you know take the jacket off but be nice that it just had that little gap in there where you could see it was a separate separate uh, sculpt um, aside from that it's a f I don't want to say fantastic because I always say fantastic in my reviews but it's a gorgeous figure how's that um, it would have been nice if he came with some accessories but that's not necessarily a big thing uh, also his hat doesn't come off so if anyone's asking if his hat comes off it doesn't um, in the way of his articulation, he has what looks to be only left and right articulation. The head really doesn't move up and down. Um, he's got the he's got the hinge, which tends to be featured on characters like Gentleman Ghost. I think Joker also had it as well. The hinged shoulders, as opposed to like the ball and socket shoulder. He's got the swing, uh, the swivel bicep. You can bend the elbow, rotate the hand. Um, it doesn't look like he has any uh, mid-torso articulation underneath the jacket here. If he does, you're not going to move it just because of all the stuff that's over top of it. Um, the legs bend in and out, left and right, but again, this jacket is really going to prevent you from doing a lot of that stuff. You can swivel the thigh, you can bend the knee, and you can also bend the foot. Um, this is probably a figure that when I get the was Steppenwolf out, 
I believe he had the bases. When I get the second wolf out, I'll probably use the base, one of the bases for question. Um, just because he's got very small feet and with the stance that you can get him in, he's toppling over at least. Oh, okay, there we go. Got it a little better. Um, but yeah, I probably will use the stand with question here. And I actually like the fact that, as a little side note, I actually like the fact that some of the figures come with bases. I know some people say, well, why don't you... And I think even originally I said, why didn't you swap out the bases for something else? But I like that some of the bases are included that for figures, especially female figures, that don't want to stand very well, you can put them on bases. And no doubt I'm going to touch base on this again when I do the reviews of Steppenwolf. So if it seems like deja vu, it probably, it's not you. Um, but the question figure, or the figure in question, um, is a fantastic figure. There I go with saying fantastic again. I would give this figure a solid 9. Uh, while I wish the jacket was a separate piece, uh, that's a small gripe. The coloring, the sculpt, and everything else certainly bring this figure up to a 9. Uh, well worth getting this figure. Certainly if you're only getting this figure, you're only going to have one piece of Kilowog. But if you had to pick up one figure from this wave, that figure is Question and uh, probably Cyborg Superman. Um, but that was a toy spot on a very nice question figure from DC Universe Wave 11. Stay tuned for the remaining reviews of DC Universe Wave 11 figures, and I'll see you guys then.